Have you ever thought of living close to a corn maze? Well, in today's video, we're talking actually about the West Anthony Henday neighborhoods, which actually is really close to the corn maze. So back in the day when you lived in Edmonton and you wanted to go to the corn maze, you knew it was far, far west. Now there are lots of neighborhoods growing and we're gonna talk about three of those areas today. So all these neighborhoods are relatively new and they're all west of Anthony Henday. The Edgemont area, the Uplands area, and River's Edge are the three neighborhoods I'm gonna talk about in today's video. They are all just located north of the North Saskatchewan River and west of Anthony Henday. Edgemont is the older one, so the one at the north part, as further south you get, the newer the neighborhood. So River's Edge is a brand new neighborhood compared to Edgemont, who's been around for about six or seven years. So let's start off with Edgemont. Edgemont is an area that is just south of the Wedgwood Creek Ravine, west of 215th Street, and north is not a complete straight line as it cuts horizontally and it kind of goes um, jagged, and it's just south of the Hamptons. And like I said earlier, it's west of Anthony Henday Drive. So this area is known for all of its walking paths, its green space, it's very quiet. I also know it as very um, maze-like because it doesn't seem logical that you would take all these different jaggedy roads to get over here, but there's no other ways to get in and around the area. So it makes it for a very quiet neighborhood, but it can be frustrating if you're trying to think, hey, I just want to go from here to here. Um, it may not be as straightforward as you think. That's kind of what I found when I'm driving through the area. There's also nine storm drain ponds. So these are ponds for better lack of word, and you're walking in the walking paths, you see these beautiful ponds, but they're actually storm drain ponds that the city of Gore has put in all around the new areas to help with the drainage when it's raining and whatnot. But it makes for a really nice area when you are going down on the walking paths, if your house is backing onto one. We have a lot of geese that kind of hang out there as well too, and they seem to move to the newer and newer areas. The more developed the area gets, the the more they leave. So for example, I live in Rosenthal. We don't see them as much anymore, but I see a lot in Edgemont and they are probably continuing to move to where it's less occupied with people. Edgemont also has two natural areas, including two playgrounds as well. Now the playgrounds are pretty cool. We've been to some of them. Some of them are for older kids that one with the big web is not exactly easy for a toddler to be able to climb all the way to the top. However, a teenager is going to really enjoy it, even an elementary junior high age child. Now, one of the playgrounds, that one that I'm talking specifically, is actually located right beside the natural area. So you can take a, a walk down there and it does not feel like you're in the city anymore. So there's some really great walking paths there. If you like being outdoors, this neighborhood is probably gonna be for you. Just a side note, these trails, these walking trails are all connected to the Wedgwood Creek Ravine Trail. So it that continues on further than just this area and you'll really enjoy doing that. That's something our family is still yet to check out. There's so many great walking paths here in Edmonton and this one is not the North Saskatchewan River one. This one's actually Wedgwood Creek Ravine, which is just as cool in terms of the greenery. We've actually gone through some of the trails before and you definitely feel like you're just you've just escaped the city it seems like, but you're still very much in the city. So what is the cost to live here? The average home price that you're, is for sale currently right now as of filming is around 643,000. Now this area is full of brand new builds and resale homes. So because it's been around for a little bit, there are people that are selling their homes and have sold their homes on MLS. Now keep in mind the stats that I'm show, sharing with you today is only the stuff I see on MLS. And the reason I tell you that is because all the builders don't always record their sales on here. So then that number is going to be different and it would skew the numbers I'm sharing with you today. Because if you're buying brand new, you're gonna have a, a variety of pricing. Typically right now in our market, the brand new market is more expensive and you might not even be able to find these homes on resale because there's not enough inventory, especially as we move into the Uplands and Rivers Edge area, you might have to build the home or buy a spec home from the builder. So if we take a look at the last six months, the average price sold was 510,424. The lowest sold was 338,000 and the highest sold was six, oh, sorry, 865. So in this area, you're seeing duplexes, townhouses, you have condos, you have uh, single lane, like the laned homes with the garages in the back, the front attached garage homes. So you basically have a smattering of every selection and they all are built 
probably 2015 and newer. So you've got relatively new homes, which means the yard sizes are not necessarily huge. Now I have seen some pie shaped lots that were for sale. Of course they would cost more money and more money to develop for the fencing and the landscaping but they do have some of those in this Edgemont area. If you're looking for a specific size of lot, typically you're gonna have to go through a builder to see what lots are available. Now in Edgemont, you have different areas on MLS, it's called Edgemont. In the builder world, you might see different names of areas like Woodhaven, Timber Ridge, Edgemont East. These are all areas that are all included in Edgemont, but because the builders are trying to market, the developer is trying to market these new areas to kind of put focus that's how they name them. So a few of the areas that are newer is Edgemont Ravines and Edgemont East. Now they also have a commercial development called Edgemont Landing, which is the commercial area that you'll see located just off of Lassard Road and Anthony Hende, and you'll see a Tim Hortons and a bunch of different commercial. Now there's more plans for it to develop even more. And so that's going to be the amenities, main amenities for Edgemont area. Now that home I told you that sold for 865,000, that house was just under 3,000 square feet with a triple car garage. The lowest house price, that's a single family house price, was the townhouses with no condo fees that Streetside puts out. Lowest sold home price is gonna be the duplexes. There are townhouses and duplexes with no condo fees in the Edgemont area, and there are a few apartments in Edgemont, including a rental. Now, if we take a look at the average price from this year to last year, the trending prices is going a little bit downwards. Last year, it would, the average was 524,000 for single family homes, and it now moved to 506. So when we're looking at the resale value, the value is trending downwards, but I tell you on the new home world, the prices are going upwards. So they have come down a little bit. They're giving negotiations. Some builders are, not all of them, but you're starting to see they still cost more. So the average home I see for these kinds of homes, front attached garage homes, are well over 600,000 in the new home sales world versus the market resale market. So why is the price on the resale market moving downwards compared to the new build? You always tend to see this when you have builders in the area and you also know that like builders cost more money and if people aren't inclined to buy as much and they're coming over here, mortgage interest rates, economy, people's jobs, those all play a factor in the pricing and how it's going downwards. Now it's not going downwards too bad, but our market has been adjusting and this neighborhood is of no exception. Neighborhoods especially that are brand new with new builder areas always get a hit a little bit harder and don't hold on to their equity quite as long as the areas that are more inwards in the city close to the river. Now we are talking about a brand new river neighborhood and you'll have to tune in for River's Edge. I'm gonna talk about uplands first before we get to River's Edge. So before I get to uplands, let's talk a little bit about the demographics in Edgemont. Who lives there? So if you take a look at the Edgemont area, of course it's very family friendly and people who have families, you'll find first home home buyers, empty nesters. Um, from areavibes.com, we have about 4,000 people that are living currently in the Edgemont area. And if you take a look at the overall population of Edmonton of just over 1,053,000, you can see it's a small pocket, right? It's a small area and it's still developing. Um, there are 55% of families with kids at home in this neighborhood compared to 45% overall in Edmond. 77% of married couples live in Edgemont versus the 69% of married couples in all of Edmonton. Now it is a predominantly English speaking neighborhood like most of Edmonton. We don't tend to see a lot of French, but there are different pockets in Edmonton and surrounding areas that are more French dominated and this area is more English based. Now, one thing to note here, even though it's a newer neighborhood, they have a very active community league. And that's something interesting to know, especially as a potential homeowner, because they're actively doing things to do good things for the community, right? So one of the things they do in the winter is they have a snowbank rink and they put a lot of money into it. They had some sponsors go in, but now the neighborhood who was ever a member can actually take advantage of the snowbank rink in the winter. For accessibility, the area is 
not got a whole lot of amenities other than the ones I told you about. So if you want to get groceries, you would probably either go to the Save On Foods in the Hamptons area, or you would go into Windermere where they have the Superstore, Safeway, and a whole bunch of other amenities. So you are easy access to them. However, you have one pathway into the Hende, and you can go a different direction in the back end on 215 Street, because sometimes the Anthony Hende is backed up and you want to go to 215 Street, you can access the Costco in the West End there. Now I talked to you earlier, little mention about Uplands and we're gonna talk about that neighborhood right now. Uplands at Riverview is located just south of Edgemont East. It is an upscale neighborhood known for its elevated position offering panoramic views of the areas. So it's intended to be similar to actually Windermere and it's supposed to be along the same line in terms of they put in those fancy street lamps because they're going to build uplands into a prestigious area just like Windermere. So the, what they've developed in the area is kind of coinciding with it. Right now there's currently no condominiumized properties, only single family properties. The entry level home to get into uplands is going to be the townhouses with no condo fees and then you've got the stacked ones with the garages at the bottom so no basement but you also have some townhouses with basements you've got the lane homes and you've got front attached garage homes you also have a more luxury area which i'll talk about in a minute here so the interesting thing when i was looking up more information about uplands i have helped a few families move here but i didn't know that they actually built a pollinator corridor so this is to obviously encourage pollination the bees and all that kind of fun stuff. And so they planted a lot of extra things to attract it. They put in an animal crossway to make sure animals have a safe path to walk. I did not know that. So that was an interesting fact I thought I'd share with you. Now, just like its neighbor that we just talked about in Edgemont, it also has a lot of walking paths. This one is 8.5 kilometers of walking paths. You've got paths, you've got ponds, lots of different areas. It is very quiet right now as it, the area continues to develop. So you also have the quietness for now. Now, if you've been to Windermere and if they're trying to get it to be that way, it's still relatively quiet, but you do have a lot of traffic moving through. Currently in Uplands, you do not have that type of traffic moving through. Like I said, at the beginning of this video, you're right by the corn maze and people don't always come to the corn maze. Their goal when I was taking a look at the developer website is that they'd have 4,700 families. So this area is not as big as the Edgemont area. It is a bit smaller of an area and it's meant to be more exclusive. So if we take a look at the market stats in Uplands, for single family homes, we had 88 homes sold in 2023 so far this year, and compared to last year at 64. So we've had more sales so far this year than we did last year. And the average price um, last year was 496. The highest price was 929,000 and the lowest at 324. This year, the highest sold was $1.35 million, the lowest at 292 and the average of 536. So the prices are trending higher. Now, why is that? Like I said, this area is meant to be more luxurious. So the types of homes are building and putting in here are gonna be higher level. So the luxury area, for example, a lot of them are triple car garage, a lot of them back onto either the um, green space, like the trees, or the pond. So walkout lots are going to cost you more. They have more of an exclusive, smaller area. And when things are more condensed and you have less activity and it's smaller, you tend to see that things cost more money, even in the older resale areas in Edmonton. Now, if you're wondering what kind of homes you'd be getting in the luxury homes, you're looking at 2,700 square feet above grade and 3,000 that I've seen being sold on MLS. Now, I know that a lot of builders are still building in that area, and so you're still seeing houses being sold. Of course, if you're spending over a million dollars, a lot of people may want to custom build their home. Some builders specialize in custom, and that's the area that they have and the lots that they have, and the lot sizes, the lot where it's backing and facing, that's gonna be important to you, then you're gonna to wanna to build. It's harder to wait for the home to come up for sale because not a whole lot of these resale homes are coming on because they just either moved in or built it. So you can imagine if you built your dream home, you likely aren't moving in that quick of a span of time. Uplands area is still new and so it's not gonna have as many resale homes. Edgemont's been around a bit longer Uplands is a few years earlier than that. So I would say it's about five-ish years. And right around now is when people are starting to sell because their mortgages are com coming up for renewal. So you're starting to see that. But especially when people are buying like million dollar houses, they're usually staying in them typically longer, but not always the case. 
I also believe that because there's no condo plans at the moment, it's also helping as well because it's making the area more desirable. It's less dense. There's not as many people there. And so they can demand more money for homes. Now, what about River's Edge? That's the newest area. They just started seeing sales on MLS in 2022, but I know that it's just been the last few years that it's been even existing. Now it used to be called River Alder, um, but they changed it, the name to River's Edge. And um, there's a lot of builders in this area. There's not a lot of market stats because it's still relatively new. They have 10 home builders and three types of products that you can buy in River's Edge. Now River's Edge is literally on the River's Edge. It's exactly north of the North Saskatchewan River and just south of Uplands area. It's south of the main road that you take from Anthony Hende, and I don't want to butcher the name, so I'm going to just have the name written here. It's hard to say, so I don't want to say it wrong. Now, there's also access to this area. It's not developed. You can see by the B-roll that it's pretty much land right now, but they do have plans to also have walking paths and storm ponds, just like all the other neighborhoods. But why is this neighborhood more desirable? You guessed it, that river valley access is going to be huge. The fact that there are certain trees they're not going to be able to cut down or clear. So there's going to be a lot of this great foliage that you're going to see if you live on river's edge. So currently there's only seven properties for sale on MLS and they range from 334,000 to 599,000. Now there's been 16 homes sold in on MLS period since it's inception and it's ranging from 305,000 to 1 million 30. Now the one that was just sold over a million was actually an older home. It was an acreage and it was a one acre lot. So remember Edmonton is growing into all the acreages and all these new builds are kind of going into the areas where they used to be considered acreage living. So that home was a bungalow that sold. So it's kind of an anomaly in terms of what they have. A lot of the homes are currently being built. The higher end homes I know are being custom built. And so we're not going to see them on the resale market. And the average property prices do range. It depends on what you're looking to buy. You can buy anything in the, like the 350s all the way up into custom land. If you want to look at a front attached garage home, you are looking at 600,000 plus depending on the builder you're working with and kind of what the upgrades you have, or if you're buying a spec home. So there aren't a whole lot of areas in Edmonton that are close to the River Valley. If you've heard my market stats before, I've talked about how the River Valley areas tend to be almost recession proof. So when the market goes down, the value stay, still stays there because they're desirable areas. Now they have bigger lots than they would at River's Edge, but also because they're just a desirable area because of the location and proximity to the river. So what do I predict for the River's Edge area? I think this is a baby neighborhood that has a lot of potential because of the fact that, you know, just think about the Garapi, the Oleskew area, the Cameron Heights area, that one's a newer one, um, the Laurier Heights, all those areas in the older areas, they were built in the 1950s and they had the ability to grow. Now Cameron Heights hasn't grown as much I think as they anticipated just because of the lack of access in and out of Cameron Heights. You've got River's Edge that's a lot more accessible off the Hende going both to Windermere and into the West End. And so I think it may be a little bit more promising than what happened in Cameron Heights. Now Cameron Heights has high end property homes there too, very exclusive and also close to that Wedgwood Creek Ravine. But the River's Edge is literally on the River's Edge, the, the, the more coveted area, which is the North Saskatchewan River. So I think that you know, if you fast forward 50 years from now, this neighborhood will probably keep its value as long as you build a sustainable type home, nothing too crazy. Um, people who spend over a million dollars sometimes customize their homes so custom that it ends up being quite difficult and challenging to sell. But I do suspect that the average price of these homes of the 600 will continue to rise over time. And yes, like I said earlier, new builders, like when you're competing with builders versus resale, it will always be a challenge. But eventually when the builders move out and they're done, it will change the value and what the market's going to do. So just like areas in the West, like Secord and Rosenthal, as they become more developed and the builders start to move out, you'll start to see the market stats formulate a little bit better and more accurate because now we're seeing all the sales instead of just some of the sales and then other people are buying in the other areas. So if you have any questions about any of these areas, 
pop it down below. What are you looking for in a neighborhood? What is your average price, do you think? In Edmonton, our average price currently is 500,000. So if you're looking for something under 400,000, you have to understand in these areas, under 400,000 is going to get you a townhouse with no condo fees. If you want a lane home with the garage in the back, if you don't have the garage included, it could be in the fours, but if it has the garage, it usually is in the higher part of the fours or low fives. So hopefully this video helped and we'll talk to you next time.